Um, how you doing, guys? I'm Better doing than you. Right. <laughs> well, we'll see. Well, listen, <laughs> first time in a th- tw- three months, it's not off a win. So it'll be interesting. Yeah. What? Uh, listen, so much to talk to you about after the, uh, the lost weekend at Fenway in Boston. Uh-huh. What could you possibly say to Yankee fans that would make them feel a little bit better that the eighth and ninth innings are not going to be a problem moving forward? Well, I would say that we have really good uh, relief pitchers and that without question we've had, you know, uh, four or five just gut-wrenching, awful, um, you know, tough outings where, you know, we've lost a game, but – um, you know, hoping that the, that's more of a aberration and, you know, especially a guy like Lowe, who's been so good all year. Um, you know, I'm very confident that, uh, these guys will all bounce mm-hmm. back. I feel really good about where, you know, Chappie and Britain are starting to move and, um, and hopefully we continue to put ourselves in position to win those games and, and start closing them out. And look, Lewisig has had a good year, but he's had these implosions, these two games that really kind of bring up his numbers. Because of that, did you give thought after the third batter, you know what, not his night. We've seen it before. Let me get him out of the game. What made you yeah. decide to keep him in for a fourth batter? Yeah, um, definitely did give that some thought. Um, ultimately just felt like, he was actually throwing the ball pretty well. He made the mistake to Cordero on, on a two strike where he just right down the middle where he got him with a base hit. You know, Renfro hit a ball that, you know, probably doesn't really hit typically and just kind of ran into that ball down the line. Um, and just felt like if he could execute, you know, continue to execute his sinker or breaking ball that he, he gave us a really good matchup against Hernandez. I mean, going into that, I think he had given up one extra base hit to a right-handed hitter all year. So I, I still felt good about the matchup stuff. Felt like the stuff was good. You know, sometimes you get hacked, you know, sometimes you get guys put good swings on a ball and, and uh, you know, uh, Enrique end up getting a pitch he could handle enough and, and smoked one, but Sure, I absolutely I can sit, you know, like, you know, is that the spot to where you go to Brit? And, and in hindsight, maybe I wish I would have, but also felt really good about um, Lowe and what he's capable of in there in that spot. You know, you've said it uh, too many times. I get it. You know, that's another gut punch. That's a gut-wrenching mm-hmm. loss. Um, and I'm not sure what you can do, to be honest about it, as I'm asking you the questions, but... You know, four-run leads aren't safe. Three-run leads aren't safe. God forbid it's a one-run lead in 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 an upcoming game. Right now, today, and I know it's a tough question to ask, how do you have confidence in any of them to come in in the eighth or ninth innings to get you out of a game? The fan base doesn't. Well, (laughs) you know, I I do. Um, If if I look at Jonathan Loisiga and Chad Green and Zach Britton and – or Oldest Chapman. These are those are great pitchers that I still feel very good about that are gonna be closing out important games for us the rest of the way. Um, because we've had four or five where a different guy is, you know, been had on a certain day, you know, that's gonna happen. Unfortunately it's happened to us in some some really tough situations where we have had big leagues, but overall those guys are, you know, not uh, depleted guys. Those well, guys for are, this. are still great pitchers that have had a bump in the road once or twice. And, and when you add it all up, it's, it's, we've had those four or five just terrible, hard losses, but, um, we're still talking about really, really good pitchers. Yeah, I get it. On paper, I get it. The problem is that over the last five weeks, the bullpen's the second worst in the American League, having Mm -hmm. given up almost six runs, you know, uh, ERA at least of almost six. So I'm saying to myself, Mm -hmm. you guys are in a dogfight for a wild card spot now. So if you had, I'll give you an example. You got a a one-run lead tonight. Who's closing Uh out the game? Chappie. 100% 100% locked in, no doubt. Yeah, Chappie's closing out the game. Was going back to uh, Sunday, was Chad Green ever warming up during that eighth inning or no? No. Okay. When Lewisinger gives up the double, all right, mm-hmm. and now contact could tie the game, which is what happened, and contact right. gave him the lead. 
Zach yep. Britton's gr- is has had a great career, but Chad Green has been more of a strikeout pitcher. Why yep. not go to Chad in that spot where look, Zach did his job, like he got three outs, yep. but there was contact, which is a part of kind of Zach's resume. Right. Like it's not that he doesn't strike guys out, but Chad clearly strikes out more guys. Why not Chad right. Green in that spot? Because Britt was the guy I was going to if if I needed help behind Loisega in that spot, and just you know some of the things Greeny you know, has been through, we're just kind of had, had the mind made up that Britt was, was next in line uh, in that game to, to get big outs, especially at that part of the order where it was coming up to the lefty who obviously we know they'd hit for right. then Bogart's endeavors. That's who I was going with. So you were, was there any part of you because of the struggles he had earlier in the week of wanting to stay away from him? That was a part of the decision. Not, not really, but but I think there, you know, there has been a part of me that that's wanted Greeny to have a little bit of a reset because we've leaned on him so heavily in the first half, um, you know, from an inning standpoint, from a usage standpoint. That you know, but that said, he was very much in play, and and I didn't expect that Domingo Herman was going to pitch into the eighth inning. You know, I, I was going into that game with Domingo having not even been built all the way back up to a full starters, like thinking. Uh, you know, hopefully we can get four or so out of Domingo, and then we can line up with, you know, Low, Greeny, Britton, right. Chaffee to kind of close it out. So he just went so much deeper in the game that I was I was comfortable at that point Ooh. that we were going to ride Low, Britton, Chaffee to the end there. Now you go to Zach Britton, and again, I'll, guy did his job. He got three outs. Don't you have mm-hmm. to bring the infield in though because of him being a ground ball pitcher and the risk of what ended up happening? <clears throat> Yeah, I mean that's that 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 is a fair question, and that's the one uh, you know I kind of question myself about a little bit. I think in the end, maybe I play the middle halfway. What we did was we went quarters and middle back with no outs. Obviously, with one out, we're going to bring them in, but with no outs there and the go ahead run on second, I just didn't want some kind of soft t- contact going through and beating us. But probably in hindsight, playing the middle at a half waist point uh, was probably the way to go and um yeah so that's the one area i question talking to aaron boone of course uh, every week we do it yankees raise uh pregame tonight at 6 30 montgomery against mcclanahan have you asked brian cashman for help in bringing somebody in to uh change the course of uh the season um no um you know i know you know Cash is down here with with all their guys in in Tampa right now over over the complex, and I know they're going through every possible scenario. Obviously, having conversations with just about every team, and 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 hopefully um, things that help us not only in the short term but in the long term as well. And uh, we'll see what the next few days uh, brings. But no, I don't. You know, my job is to make sure as best we can get our guys ready uh, each and every night for the guys in this room and and know that we have, you know, enough to go out and and still go on a really good run and turn this into a special season. And that's our focus with with the guys that are in this room right now. You know, my favorite topic with you is uh, Giancarlo Stanton. So Mm -hmm. (laughs) let's get into that now. Obviously, he didn't have to play the outfield because of the Gittins uh, injury. And I guess mm-hmm. he, he won't play till you guys go down or play uh, the Marlins. He uh, might so, play this series. Yeah? Uh, yeah, because well, I might DH judge one of these games. So um, I might I might put him in the outfield well, in this series. Just it. to jump on you real quick, because you brought something up. Why mm-hmm. would the Giddens injury cause you to not play Giancarlo in the outfield? I mean, couldn't you have just said to Greg Allen or Ryan Lamar, hey, I'm a DH. You're going to get... DH? Yeah. Well, don't you? Wasn't the whole point just to get Giancarlo in the outfield? No one's no. thinking he's a good. <laughs> then why was he playing the outfield? Then, huh? Then why would he, he play was? the outfield? Isn't it more about getting the reps in so that when you're in a National League ballpark or when Judge is back, yeah, you have the ability he's to, have do to do it? Play. Yes, yes. But I, but I'm not, I'm not going to DH an elite outfielder in Fenway Park. At you know when you know our season's on the line, just. To, to get him the reps, then is he I'm good? not going to DH somebody that's that's a that's a rabbit no, in I, the outfield. I get that, but so, is he going to is he going to play left field like all three games in Miami, or is it only a one game thing? I don't know about all three, but my hope is a couple. You know, with a day game after a night game, the last day, I, 
Um, I, I doubt I'll run them out there all three days unless we have, you know, some kind of double switch or I get them out of there with a lead late or something like that. But um, there's, there's a good chance you could see them in the outfield in this series against the race. Yeah, the only reason I brought it up is just to get them out there. Obviously, Lamar is better defense. Like, I understand that. I thought it was right. more just to get him out there because he hasn't done it in almost two years. Well, I mean, the, the first time he goes out there, he's not going to have done it. So, like – He's going to get out there when when it when it calls for it. Is it is it tonight? By the way, because I don't think the lineup's been posted. Will it be tonight with Judge coming back? No, Judge Judge is back tonight. Judge is in the outfield tonight. Gotcha. There's, but I might play him in the outfield tomorrow if I if I DH Judge tomorrow. So look, I, I think I think the outfield with with Giancarlo is is going to start to very much be in play now. And, and hopefully it goes well and, and it can start to be, you know, an option for us a couple times a week. Talking to Aaron Boone, Yankees manager, you said something a few seconds ago that was interesting for me to hear, and that is that you recognize that your season's on the line. And mm-hmm. listen, I'm not in, in a clubhouse, so I can't speak to it, but maybe you can a little bit. Do you guys actively discuss that? Or is it just the assumption, hey, the guys are well aware of where we're at? No, I think the guys are very much well aware of where we're at. And frankly, you know, we are playing pretty good baseball overall. I mean, you, you take out a couple of, you know, gut wrenching losses that you expect to close out. And, you know, we're, we're, I feel like guys are, are doing some really good things. I feel like our starting rotations throwing the ball well. Um, you know, feel like we're getting some guys that are starting to swing the bats back. Obviously, we get a, we get Judgy back in there tonight, which right. is big. So we know as a group, and and we talk about this, I guess, certainly in smaller groups and in our smaller, you know, <clears throat> hitter meetings, pitcher meetings, what our plans are and things like that. But <clears throat> we are still a very confident group and know that we are capable of going on a great run, and that's that's the expectation. But we're also just trying to really keep it short, simple, and, and it's about today. And uh, hopefully we can go out and against a really tough opponent and, and, and get this first one. My final thing for me on Stanton. Listen, I, mm-hmm. he had a hit in every game, so I get it, right? Um, mm-hmm. He had a couple of bats where it was really strange to me where he went up there and it was like he just told himself, I'm just going to swing at every pitch, which, mm-hmm. you know, was beneath him talent-wise, obviously, and he did get a hit in every game. Did you talk yep. to him about a couple of those at-bats where he was literally swinging at balls three feet off the plate? Well, I mean, <clears throat> look, <laughs> Giancarlo is a unique player in that even at times when he's going really well, some of his outs or some of his swings, um, you know, don't look real good, even when he's going really well. So I feel like he's going through a little bit of a stretch here this last week or 10 days where he's not totally locked into the plate, um, even though he was able to scratch some knocks out this weekend. So um, hopefully we can get him back on track to, to get into that mode where, you know, obviously when he gets really rolling, he's a guy that can, that can carry you. So we're just trying to get him that, back to that point and get him on balance and, um, get them in, in strong hitting positions uh, over and over again. And, and, and hopefully, um, you know, coming out of the off day, uh, today's the day where he gets it, gets it rolling for us. When should we expect to see Luke Voigt back? Um, sometime this week, I would expect him back. He's doing really well. He was actually over at our – a bunch of us were over at our um, spring training complex yesterday uh, morning uh, – <laughs> Uh, Higgy, Judge, and um, Luke were were all there doing defensive work and hitting off the velo machine and um, working out. So, um, and he's doing really well. So he's going to run bases today, potentially tomorrow. So he could be back. Uh, he'll he should be back at some point this week. You've talked a lot about taking gut punches this year, and Yankee fans understand mm-hmm. that they've experienced it. Which of these losses has been the worst for you personally? It it's. Um, I, I don't know. I mean, there's been there's been four four or so pretty memorable gut punches, as I've called them, um, and and they all sting. And um, the one thing that I've been really pleased though with this group is is all that we've been through this year and all the adversity we faced and some of the difficult losses that we faced. They have re- time and time again con- 
continue to get off the mat and we got to do it again and know that, you know, we're going to have to go on a really good run at some point if we want to get to where we want to be. Listen, the Saturday win might be your best win of the season. All things considered, yep. you know, down 3-1, <laughs> kind of just, you know, not going through the motions. I don't mean it that way, but no real you know, spark and bang. All of a sudden, yeah. you steal a W. Like We're all saying, hey, okay, here we go. This yeah. team does have a pulse, you know. So I'm sure you went to bed Saturday night, although disappointed from Thursday and Friday, feeling really good about the prospects going into the Hermann start, not knowing that he was going to throw a gem for seven innings, right? Yeah, yeah, no question. I mean, it's it's been unfortunately that kind of roller coaster for us this year, and we want to get off that roller coaster and just um, you know start heading Let up. Let me ask you this: we, if, yeah, do you ever feel like you know? Sometimes we talk to you, and I I look back and I listen to the interviews sometimes to see if we could have done it differently or better, or you know, do we ask all the right questions and try to gauge how you answered something based on maybe what happens in the next couple of days. There are times. I find that we talk about the Yankees this year like you're 10 games under 500. Yeah. Do, you, do you feel that way sometimes? Sometimes, but that's, that's, that's one of the great things about getting to put this uniform on and getting to represent this franchise. We Expectations are always um, high, and, and the standard is always incredibly high, and we nobody, you know, expects to live up to those more than all the people in this room and so i understand that that comes with it and 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 we certainly understand that that comes with it and we certainly went into this season rightfully so with very high expectations we still have those expectations we still have an opportunity to make good on those and that's what we're working hard on to 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 get to and we'll continue to grind away at it does Brian Cashman give you any updates on what the heck's going on over the next three days? Does he say, yep, we made an off-run Trevor story? Yeah, we're talking about Joey Gallo. Are you in the dark on everything that's going on right now? No, he's, he usually keeps me involved of, of where they're at on certain things or if some things are down the road or whatever. So, um, you know, I'm, I'm talking to him all the time. So who do you want? You want Joey Gallo? Is that your preference? <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I don't I, I do very much leave that to him and, and those guys, and I know they'll do the right thing. But um, we'll see. We'll and I know you're very days. and you're very excited about Clay Holmes, right? Y- yes, <laughs> I think you, call, you called him a righty, uh, right-handed assassin. Or right-handed right-handed assassin. Right-handed I assassin. mean, I don't know what you had right. for dinner last night. But okay. <laughs> Okay, okay. He kills right. Right. He gets right. We'll, see, we'll, see, we'll see. We're, we'll go, see we're gonna see all right. this year and a year from now. We'll see. Yeah, we're, we're gonna, gonna see, see how we right. look back on this one. Um, right. forty-three and twenty-one. That gets you in. You think you can rock that out in the last sixty-four? For uh, uh, record-wise, yeah, uh, forty-three and twenty-one gets you to ninety-four wins. That's a lock for the playoffs. It is all right. Well, let's go do it. Um. Uh, we can't win 43 tonight. We got to go out and try and play well. And that's, I, I know that's not necessarily what you want to hear, but we know we have to play great baseball these final couple months plus of the season, but it starts with an important one tonight. And that's where our focus. Well, is. you're the only team in baseball with a righty assassin. So you got that going for you. <laughs> right. oh, Here we go. <laughs> uh, let me just tell you this. He better yeah. get the first righty he faces out. Yeah. Well, he that faces right Manuel Morgontan. He better strike him out. Is he available tonight? Is he in the building ready to go? He is. All yeah. right. Beautiful. All right. Take care, right. guys. Good Thank job. You, Thank you. I appreciate it, buddy. Aaron Boone Report brought to you by Jersey Mike's, the official.